every time we launch a Halo game, we do we, we typically do some kind of live action content or, or scaled up content, and we do uh, live action commercials. We did shorts with Neil Blomkamp, and of course, because it's because these are little compressed vignettes and little moments from the universe, the the frustration and the request from fans is make it longer, do more, mm -hmm. make it a real story. We've got um, I mean we've got a good story uh, that that we came up with and a story that ties in very nicely to kind of the existing fiction in the universe that's the last 10 years of, of books and comics and games, uh, and also to some plans we've got for the future, not least of which is Halo 4, uh, of course, coming out in November. So we had this great story, and we're looking for the right way uh, to tell it. And the universe has always had different kinds of stories. Some stories are great in a video game setting. Uh, some stories are great in a novel or in a comic or animation. Um, and this is one that offered, especially with the kind of the emotional beats of this story um, that seem to suggest that uh, using real people and getting some real faces. Um, yeah, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how do you take advantage of the things you can do in live action that you can't do in a game. And one of those is kind of a sense of scale, right, and weight and size. Yeah. Yeah. When the chief shows up, you're not mistaken as to who it is. It's a map. Series Halo 4 Forward Unto Dawn is uh, it's a story about a group of cadets uh, at a military academy. They're kind of the the children of the elite of the United States, or pardon me, United Nations uh, Space Command, kind of the, the military, ruling military body at the time. Uh, and they are uh, in the midst of a, of a civil war, a uh, human civil war that took place uh, before kind of the traditional humans versus aliens conflict started in the, in the universe. Uh, and in particular, there's one cadet there, uh, a kid named Thomas Lasky, who uh, is trying to make peace, or not make peace, but kind of figure out what his purpose is in, in relation to this particular war. Uh, his role, whether he wants to fight this war, whether he's capable of fighting this war, uh, and, uh, and him kind of finding himself. You get to know a number of the other cadets, his friends that, uh, that help him learn more about uh, himself, and they're all going through this together. And then, um, uh, not a huge spoiler, uh, but things change very dramatically for them uh, as the beginning of the Human Covenant War uh, starts up. And so it's the, uh, the voyage of this one cadet and his friends uh, trying to, to figure out uh, themselves and then figure out how to survive uh, in, a, in a very violently changed world. Of course they need, uh, even the ones who, who are in it for the long term, even the ones who want this to be their career, uh, they, they're going to need, uh, they're going to need help and they're going to need inspiration and that uh, luckily for them arrives in the form of Master Chief. But it's a big thing is like you can't reveal the Master Chief's face because that might take, break some of the illusion that players have that they're the hero and so on. The actor we cast is a guy called Daniel Cudmore. Um, I think uh, the, the most appropriate uh, role that he was in that people will understand and recognize and it makes sense for the chief was he was Colossus in X-Men. Mm -hmm. See, he is just a massive, massive guy and he's actually built more or less as the chief is described. Now he doesn't actually talk in the role mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the chief's voice has to sound more or less like Steve Downs. Of course, he's much younger. Uh, so we, we just needed an actor who could capture that, that physicality and have a real charisma and a real presence, even though his face is disguised for the entire performance. But we're, we're carefully layering in some really specific story elements in uh, Forward Unto Dawn that will pay off in Halo 4. Now, I would caveat that you don't need to watch uh, mm -hmm. Forward Unto Dawn to understand Halo 4 and vice versa, but there are going to be these little resonant connections that are going to trigger for people who've... Uh, who've seen this and for fans of the fiction there's even more layers of that stuff and it's an actually a fairly important connection it's not certainly in terms of the the fictional need to understand it it's fairly light but the connection itself is actually mm -hmm. super important mm -hmm. not only for Halo 4 but yeah. for the the future of the Halo universe mm -hmm. yeah. we have we're going to have fans uh, of Halo 4 whose dads were playing Halo 1 in college and they're sort of you know, passing it down through the generation in a way. And we want to make sure that there's, there's an on-ramp for the universe. It's the same approach that we take with the franchise generally, mm -hmm. which is we don't write novels, we don't make comic books, we, we, we run a franchise and we make video games. Uh, so what we typically do is we go find people who are awesome at doing the things that we're not and, and work with those partners and Mac. And well, that's right. I mean, part of... So we have this great franchise model that's been running for many, many years where we, you know, Greg Bear, I think, is a great example of a uh, recent uh, size by... There's a warthog behind me, isn't uh, there? We were, yeah, supposed to be, we were supposed to act cool about it. <laughs> I was so sorry. And you blew it. It's like, no, hey, no big yeah. deal. Why, <laughs> this why, happens why all act the cool time. about it, really? Because it's a warthog. <laughs> I don't hear brakes. What were you saying? There are no brakes. <laughs> <Yes. laughs>